Hi there, this video is a quick review of multiplication of polynomials. Because the first major thing we're going to be doing in this class is factoring, but you can't really understand factoring if you don't understand multiplication. I hope you do understand multiplication. I'm hoping that as I go through this real quickly, you'll just be sitting there nodding your head saying, yeah, I know all that. But if you don't know this, if this is not all completely familiar to you, you may need to go back and spend some time looking at those sections in the textbook that talk about multiplication of polynomials or maybe asking for help or going online and looking for some other resources that explain that. So in this picture here, how many smiley faces do you see? Now, just a reminder, Anytime I ask you a question or show you a problem, if you want some time to think about it or try to figure it out, you can pause the video. So let's count the smiley faces. We could just go through and count them all one at a time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, <clears throat> ah, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. But there is an easier way than counting them all individually. And that is to notice that we have four rows with 10 smiley faces in each row. And so that means that altogether there's four times 10 or 10 times four, which is 40 smiley faces. By the way, the commutative property of multiplication is the official name for the fact that when you're multiplying two real numbers together, it doesn't matter which one's first and which one's second. Okay, how about this example? How many seats do you see here? Well, there's five rows, and how many seats in each row? Well, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, plus four more, so 10 in all. So with five rows of 10 seats, that would be 50. Six plus four is 10, five times 10 is 50. But another way to look at this is, okay, there's seats in the front of the room and seats in the back of the room. And if we looked at those individually, in the front of the room, we've got five rows with six in each row. And in the back of the room, we've got five rows of four. So the five rows of six would be 30 seats here, plus the five rows of four would be 20 seats here, and 30 plus 20 is 50. So it's either five times six plus four, which is five times 10, which is 50, or it's five times six plus five times four, which is 30 plus 20, which is 50. And the fact that these are equal to one another, that we can do five times six plus four, or we can do five times six plus five times four. In other words, we can add first and then multiply, or we can multiply first and then add. In general, the pattern that this follows is that a times b plus c is equal to a times b plus a times c. And this is a big useful fact that is called the distributive property or the distributive law. So it explains how multiplication and addition are related to one another. We say that multiplication distributes over addition. So if we're multiplying something times the sum of two things added together, we can just multiply by each of those two things and then add those together. So if we have an expression like three times x squared plus 5x minus 7, all in parentheses, so the 3 is getting multiplied by that whole thing, we can remove the parentheses and use the distributive property to multiply that out. We've got 3 times x squared plus 3 times 5x, which is 15x, and then the 3 times the minus 7 would be minus 21. Another example, 2y squared times the expression 
y to the third power minus 4y plus 10. When you multiply it out, you get 2y to the fifth power minus 8y to the third power plus 20y squared. Now notice where this y to the fifth power came from. We had this y squared times y cubed, or to the third power, and what that really means is y times y times y times y times y. So altogether, that's five y's being multiplied. That's y to the fifth power. So 2y squared times y cubed gives us 2y to the fifth. The 2y squared times the minus 4y gives us minus 8y cubed. And the 2y squared times the 10 gives us the 20y squared. Now look at this picture. How many flags do you see here? Well, one way to look at it is that altogether there are four plus two, that is six rows, with five plus three, or eight flags in each row. And if we multiply that together, four plus two, or six, times five plus three, or eight, is 48. So we got six rows of eight, that's 48 flags. But if we break it down, the red flags, there's four times five or 20 of those. The green flags, there's four times three, 12 of those. The purple flags, there's two times five or 10 of those. And the blue flags, there's two times three or six of those. So altogether, there's 20 plus 12 plus 10 plus 6, which is 48. And that's really the distributive property in action because we're taking this 4 times 4 plus 2 times 5 plus we're taking it times 3. And when we take it times 5, the 4 gets multiplied by the 5 and the 2 gets multiplied by the 5. The 4 gets multiplied by the 3 and the 2 gets multiplied by the 3. So in all, we got 4 times 5, which is 20, 4 times 3, which is 12, and then 2 times 5, which is 10, and 2 times 3, which is 6. Add them all together, we get 48. So a similar thing is happening here when we multiply x squared plus 9 times x minus 2. The x squared is going to get multiplied by the x and by the minus 2. And the 9 is going to get multiplied by the x and by the minus 2. So altogether, there's four multiplications going on, four individual things that get multiplied. And to keep track of all the multiplications that you have to do here, you can use the so-called FOIL method. The F stands for first. The O stands for outer or outside. The I stands for inner or inside and the L stands for last. So that reminds you that you have to multiply together the first terms. Here that would be x squared times x, and that gives you x to the third power. You've got to multiply the outer terms together. The x squared times the minus 2 gives you minus 2x squared. You've got to multiply the inner terms together, so the 9 times the x gives you 9x. And you've got to multiply the last terms together. So the 9 times the minus 2, the positive 9 times the negative 2, gives you minus 18. Let's try another example like that, where we use the FOIL method. So f, x times 2x would be 2x squared. o, x on the outside times the 5 is 5x. i, 3 times 2x is 6x. L, 3 times 5 is 15. So we got 2x squared plus 5x plus 6x plus 15. But that's not our final answer. There's one thing we can do to simplify this. Can you see what that is? These two terms in the middle are like one another. They're both x terms. So we can combine them into 11x. And then we end up with 2x squared plus 11x plus 15, and that is our final answer. So multiplying this out gives you this, and once you've gotten enough practice at it, then you got the hang of it, you can go directly from this to this. You don't have to write out this middle step. I'm just showing it so you can really see what's going on, but you should be able to go right away from this to this. 
Let's try another one. x minus 4 times x minus 6. First we have x squared. Outside we have minus 6x, and inside we have minus 4x, and those are going to combine to give us a minus 10x, and then last we have a plus 24. So that's x squared minus 10x plus 24. Again, you don't have to write out the middle step here. Hopefully you can do it in your head, but if you have to write this out, if that helps you keep track of everything, that's fine. But this is our final answer, as simplified as it's going to get, x squared minus 10x plus 24. And coming up, when we talk about factoring, we'll be doing the reverse of this. We'll be starting with something like x squared minus 10x plus 24, and then figuring out that you can break that up into an x minus 4 times an x minus 6. How about this one? 7x minus 1 times 2x plus 3. Well, first we get 7x times 2x is 14x squared. Outside we get 7x times 3 is 21x. Inside we get minus 1 times 2x is minus 2x. And last we get minus 1 times plus 3 is minus 3. Combine the like terms and we get 14x squared plus 19x minus 3. How about this one? 5x plus 6 times 5x minus 6. Okay, first we get 5x times 5x, that's 25x squared. On the outside we get minus 30x, on the inside we get plus 30x, and last we get minus 36. And that simplifies to, well the minus 30x and the plus 30x just add up to zero. They kill each other off. So we get 25x squared minus 36. Notice the special pattern here. These were both the same, except that one of them had a plus and one had a minus. So we ended up with the 5x times itself, and then minus 6 times itself. And how about this one? m plus 10 squared. Now you might be tempted to distribute the squared and say it's m squared plus 10 squared, but that would be wrong m plus 10 squared is not equal to m squared plus 10 squared. Exponents, that is powers, do not distribute over addition the way multiplication does. So you can't just square each thing, the m and the 10, separately. What this really means is that the exponent, the 2, tells you how many of these things to multiply together. So here we have two of them multiplied together, and that would be m plus 10 times another m plus 10. So if we multiply that out with the FOIL method, first we get n times m, that's m squared. Outside we get 10m, inside we get another 10m, and last we get 100. And combining the two in the middle, we get m squared plus 20m plus 100. So notice we did get the first thing squared, we did get the second thing squared, but we also had something in the middle that was made up of two times these two things multiplied together. If we multiply together the 10 and the m, we get 10m, and we got two of those, so it was 20m in the middle. m squared plus 20m plus 100. So that's a useful pattern to keep in mind when you have a binomial, something plus something else, and you square the whole thing. What you end up with is the first thing squared plus, or if this was a minus, this would be a minus, but two times the first thing times the second thing, and then plus the second thing squared.